Vietnam is secretly stealing the Philippines, and no one knows about it. In fact, it will probably continue stealing. Very few people know about it, because it was never reported. But why hasn't it never been covered in the media? I'll let you answer the question. You might be thinking it's impossible that Vietnam steals the Philippines, since Vietnam is not a superpower and it doesn't have the military capacity to invade another country. But you're wrong. Actually, Vietnam has already done it before and might do it again. It was like a quiet takeover, similar to what the Americans have been doing in the Philippines through agreements like the Visiting Forces Agreement, EDCA and other military deals. Vietnam has some of the largest increases in military expenditures in Southeast Asia. Between 2003 and 2018, its military spending increased nearly 700% from $841 million in 2003 to $5.5 billion in 2018. Global Firepower ranked Vietnam in the top 10 in areas including total available active military manpower. Vietnam has more than 53 million people who count as available military manpower, with an estimated 470,000 active military personnel in addition to 2.5 million reserves. Picture this, Vietnam stole the Philippines easily, despite having a weaker military in the past. Now, with a stronger military, what do you think it would do? Vietnam has its Naval Commando Regiment stationed in Cam Ran Bay. They often conduct operations in the Spartleys that simulate invading other countries' territories. This regiment has four marine battalions, two armor battalions, along with one engineer company, one signal company, and one surveillance company. They are equipped with things like amphibious tanks, armored vehicles, cannons, rifles. Even though the US keeps a close watch on Chinese activities in the Spartleys, there haven't been any reports of them having an invasion force trained for that area. Now the big question is, how did Vietnam manage to steal the Philippines in the past, especially when the Philippines had a strong military during the Marcos era? You wouldn't believe the clever way Vietnam pulled it off. In 1968, the Philippines sent troops to the Spartly Islands for the first time. They focused on bigger islands like Pagasa, to strengthen the Philippines' claim on the islands. President Marcos officially annexed the Kalayan Islands through Presidential Decree Number 1596. But Vietnam did not just settle for islands, they started occupying many reefs as well. By 2008, Vietnam had around 30 non-island features under its control, some of which were very close to islands occupied by the Philippines. Feeling pressure from losing fishing grounds in the South China Sea, the Philippines decided to occupy at least two reefs, Rizal and Balactas. I bet you didn't know about that. And why would you? Since you get all your information from the media, whose job is to conceal the truth? The way Vietnam stalled the Philippines might be the smartest takeover ever happened in the history of the world. The invasion of the Philippine island took place when all of the Philippine soldiers guarding the island of Pugad, or South K, left to attend to the birthday party of their commander officer, who was based on the neighboring Parola Island or Northeast K. The storm that day persuaded all the soldiers to regroup temporarily on Parola Island. Vietnamese officials managed to send Vietnamese prostitutes to the birthday party to lure the Filipino soldiers guarding Pugat Island. The gift was said to be a present to the Philippine commander for his birthday, and as a move by Vietnamese forces to befriend all Filipino soldiers guarding the Spartans. Philippine soldiers did not expect that Vietnam would resort to foul play, since both the Philippines and Vietnam together with the United States, were allies in the Vietnam War. 
This tactic is the reason why South Vietnamese forces knew that the Filipino soldiers had left the island. Guess what happened next? After the party, when the weather cleared, the returning soldiers were surprised to find that there was a company of Vietnamese soldiers on the island. The Vietnamese flag had replaced the Philippine flag flying on the pole, erected by the Philippine soldiers. The Filipinos trusted the Vietnamese, since after all, the Philippines helped Vietnam during the Vietnam War, sending at least 2,000 doctors, nurses, as well as enlisted men and officers, called the Philippine Civic Action Group, Vietnam. Then, the Filipino soldiers returned to Parola immediately for fear that Parola would be the next target. After Philippine officials were informed about the situation, they instructed the troops based in Parola and Pagasa to stay on alert. The following morning, the only thing that the Filipino soldiers could do on Parola was to curse, while the Vietnamese soldiers sang their national anthem. Philippine officials who did not want to compromise the alliance while the Vietnam War was still being fought, decided to remain silent. If China were to withdraw from this part lease, Vietnam would likely move in quickly. When Filipino soldiers began occupying the spot lease in the 1970s, both China and Vietnam protested strongly. However, only Vietnam acted on its protest by sending troops to occupy 10 features in the Spartly Archipelago in the 1970s, 13 in the 1980s, and 6 in the 1990s. Vietnam is likely to occupy those features. Why? Because similar to China, they believe that their sovereignty over the area dates back centuries. They see the loss of control of the Spartlies and the parasols to foreign powers as part of their historical period of humiliation when Western forces invaded and took over their lands. Reclaiming these territories is important for them to regain their national pride and restore their past greatness as a nation. Vietnam has added newer and longer range weapons on its outposts. They have developed extra systems obtained from Israel to five of these spiral islands. These systems are small, making them easy to set up and hide quickly. They need little support infrastructure. Vietnamese extra systems can target islands held by the Philippines. If Vietnam attacks the Philippines, who will come to its aid? The US and the rest of the world have already declared a policy of not getting involved in the territorial and maritime disputes in the Spartlies. If fighting breaks out between the Philippines and Vietnam, America and the world will likely just watch and call for an end to the fighting. By then, Vietnam may have already taken control of nine islands and reefs that belong to the Philippines because they are well prepared militarily to do so. Do you think they will give those islands back to the Philippines after the fighting stops? Remember, Vietnam went to war with China in the 70s in the South China Sea when it had a weaker military. What do you think it would do to the Philippines with a stronger military?